Good evening, I'm Patricia Ballone with ACTV News Update. Buffalo, New York, Uvalde, Texas, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, they're tied together in mourning as tragic scenes of mass shootings. Tonight, the president gives a national address on the need for gun control following a spate of mass shootings in these communities. On Capitol Hill, meantime, the House Judi Judiciary Committee held an emergency hearing on gun control today, a day after four people were killed in a Tulsa hospital. Lawmakers debated the Protecting Our Kids Act. The measure would bar the sale of weapons to persons under 21. It would also ban straw gun purchases. Pennsylvania Democrat Mary Gay Scanlon called for action. Day, I will not sit idly by watching preventable tragedies play out over and over again, day after day, year after year. Whether the children and teachers slaughtered in Texas last week the community members murdered in Tulsa last night or Buffalo the week before, or the more than a dozen people gunned down in Philadelphia during the Memorial Day weekend. In cities and towns across the country, we are mourning too many people whose lives have been cut short. The president addresses the nation tonight at 730. The latest COVID numbers for our area indicate an increase in the positivity rate in Prince George's. According to the Maryland Department of Health, the county's positivity rate is at 11.03 percent. More than 1,500 people have tested positive for the virus. Seven Marylanders have died of COVID over the past 24 hours. 494 people are in the hospital. That's 18 more than yesterday. The state reports the first heat-related death of the year. Health officials say the victim was a 65-year-old man from Baltimore County. As the weather gets warmer, health leaders want to remind residents to never leave children or pets inside a car. They also say to drink a lot of water and wear loose-fitting clothing. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Ballone. Coming up, veteran Democrat Glenn Ivey campaigns for a seat in the U.S. Congress. We'll have his story after the break. Something more than a birthday is happening here. Once you can see it, you can help. The sooner you recognize the signs of autism, the sooner you can make a lifetime of difference for your child. Start by answering a few simple questions at screenforautism.org. Welcome back. A Montgomery County lawmaker implores Governor Hogan to take emergency action related to the upcoming elections. Senator Cheryl Kagan sent a letter to Hogan discussing her disappointment that he vetoed her emergency legislation. SB 163 would have allowed the canvassing of ballots to begin eight days before the start of early voting. Kagan says that local boards of elections are struggling this election cycle due to delays in the approval of redistricting maps and a rescheduled primary election day. She adds that historic increases in mail-in and internet ballots, as well as postal service delays, could also increase problems. Well, he has been a public servant for much of his life. Glenn Ivey grew up in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, where schools were still segregated when he started attending. He says much of his upbringing shaped him for his career path. The father of five boys and one girl has served on Capitol Hill as counsel for several lawmakers, as an assistant U.S. attorney, and as chair of Maryland's Public Service Commission. But many Prince Georgians remember him most as state's attorney. Now, Ivy is running for the Congressional House seat in District 4. Unfortunately, things have changed a lot, but we're fighting a lot of the same battles we were fighting 30 years ago when I started working for Congressman Conyers. So, for, for example, uh, we had motor voter legislation that he was moving through at the time. Since then, the Voting Rights Act has been gutted uh, by the Supreme Court, and there's an effort now to reinstate parts of the Voting Rights Act that were killed at that point. And, I, you know, just the tenor of, of, of Capitol Hill is... Uh, changed a great deal in some ways just they find it difficult to get things done um, and so I think there's there needs to be a consistent effort to keep pushing forward on to protect the values and the things that we've won in the past and try and build on those build on Obamacare address inflation and other problems like that Ivy says his other priorities include climate change public education funding crime and COVID related issues 
As we told you yesterday, the Prince George's County Council unanimously passed the budget for fiscal year 2023. The historic $5 billion plan includes $2.6 billion for education and nearly $367 million for public safety. For some on the council due to term limits, the FY23 budget was their last. Council members Todd Turner and Danielle Glero spoke with CTV about the process. I think this one's incredibly special because you can really look back and see how far we've come um, in the growth here in Prince George's County. And that's not to say we don't have our challenges ahead, um, but there's been some really critical investments that have gotten us to this place, um, and particularly the scale of our budget this year. We've seen a budget when I first came in at about just over $3 billion now to almost $5 billion. And in the interim, obviously, we've had to deal with, uh, you know, an international crisis that that nobody ever expected in the March of 2020. We're still recovering from that. We still have needs in our community, and I believe this budget addresses those, as well as the other needs that we always have. The new budget goes into effect on July 1st. Well, it's called The Bell Affair, and it premieres tonight at the Public Playhouse. The animated documentary tells the true story of the Bell family, which sued the federal government for their freedom. freedom. The Bells were enslaved in Prince George's County and in Washington, D.C. And slavery, slavery was, was being challenged. And I think that's something that we need to recover in our understanding of American history. And I also think we need to recover or understand that slavery was challenged by families, families like the Bells. You talk about getting your freedom, how do you do it? How do you map it out? Okay? So that's what we're doing. We're dealing with detail. We're dealing with intimacies. You see? We're dealing with, we're showing how enslaved people talk to each other, lived with each other, argued with each other, challenged each other, worked together. How did they manage their family? And that is the jewel of our project. That's it. The film screens tonight at 7 o'clock at Public Playhouse in Chevrolet. Well, America's youngest and best spellers take the stage at the country's most coveted spelling competition. The 2022 Scripps National Spelling Bee is back at the National Harbor. Today is the much-anticipated finals round. 2021 Spelling Bee champ Zyla Avangarde gives some important advice to this year's contestants. You're here, you're a champion, so always remember that even though you probably will hear the bell, at the same time, just always remember you're a champion to be here and have fun. Again, the finals will air on ION Television tonight. Well, residents living along areas of Maryland's eastern shore are now bridging the digital divide. Fiber optic cables are being installed along telephone poles in rural areas where many have experienced spotty internet service or none at all. The issue created havoc for families when schools and businesses shut down during the pandemic. Estimates for laying the broadband service run about $28,000 per mile making it not very feasible for cable companies to bring service to sparsely populated areas. That all changed thanks to a grant from the federal government. The grant spurred Maryland lawmakers to establish the Rural Broadband for the Eastern Shore Act back in 2020. Still to come, Louie Fest is back. We'll have details after the break. COVID-19 is a severe lung infection Trust the American Lung Association for science-based public health information, especially for the 36 million Americans who live with lung disease. We have launched the COVID-19 Action Initiative to end COVID-19 and address future respiratory virus pandemics. Access our free lung health resources and see how you can support our initiative. Thanks for staying with us. Well, Donna Edwards begins airing her first campaign ad in her bid to regain her old Congressional District 4 seat. In the ad, Edwards shares some frustrations Maryland residents are currently facing, including diminished voting rights and gun violence. 
These are serious times. Babies gunned down in our schools and on our streets. Reproductive rights struck down in our courts. Family budgets in a tailspin and a political system that's doing nothing. The ad will be airing for at least two weeks on TV and cable in the D.C. market, as well as on African-American radio stations in the region. And it is another day to celebrate young people as the graduation season continues. The Northwestern High School class of 2022 donned caps and gowns this morning. Commencement was held just a mile or so from their Highsville campus at the University of Maryland. Vivian Nailia Castrillo. Zui Kate Lucero. Leah Zalike Abraham. The CMIT, Academy North, Parkdale, and the International High School at Langley Park also held commencement ceremonies today. The Department of Public Works and Transportation held a road safety contest for county school kids. These are some of the videos the middle and high schoolers put together this spring. The contest was part of the county's Vision Zero Focus on the Road program. It's aimed at reducing traffic deaths. The county received 30 entries from 33 students at 18 different schools. It's not just about putting together the videos. We actually will be utilizing these videos and promoting and really furthering our educational uh, information from Vision Zero Prince George's. We'll highlight this on our bus displays. We'll highlight it in the lobbies of our county buildings. We will have this on social media. So this actually is material or videos that we plan to use in our safety messaging. Three middle schools and three high schools received top honors. Well, Bowie's annual festival is back and in person this year. That's right, Bowie Fest is set to take place this Saturday, June 4th at Allen Pond Park. The family-friendly event will include arts and crafts, musical acts, dancers, a magic show, and even a rib-eating contest. Residents will also be able to get information about various clubs, nonprofits, and the services in the county in the city rather. Organizers say that 2022 marks the 45th year of the festival. Bowie Fest is the tradition of bringing out the best of Bowie. So even though it's open to anybody in the United States or the world for that matter, anybody can come enjoy Bowie Fest. We really put it on for our citizens to give them a fantastic day of just entertainment. Bowie Fest is from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. this Saturday. Now let's get a check on your weather forecast. Tonight, thunderstorms likely lows in the 60s. Friday, mostly sunny, highs around 79. Saturday, sunny skies, highs near 80. And Sunday, mostly sunny, high temperatures in the upper 70s. Sounds like a great weekend. That wraps up our CTV News Update. I'm Patricia Ballone. Have a great night.